Hello. Yes. Welcome to my channel. I decided to cover Jody Hildebrandt, and I just personally have a, I'm hyper focused on her, uh, just because uh, the roots of her story go real deep, and they're pretty disturbing in my opinion. So I'm super late to posting this. I'm exhausted. I swear to God, that's all this is. It's literally almost five in the morning. I worked all day the last two days, running on a few hours of sleep, staying up doing this. And I know it's not going to be perfect. It's my first time. I'm not great in front of the camera just yet. I promise I'll get better. Uh, but I I was came here with the purpose of delivering just a nice, rounded kind of timeline or perspective of Jody. It is my perspective. It is my opinions. Um, I did my research. I provide as much cited material as possible everything that i i pretty much used is down and going to be in the description and um yeah i hope you enjoy it jody nan hildebrandt was born june 1969 according to public records it would appear that she spent most of her childhood if not her entire life in utah um in way of her family, there isn't a whole lot out there for public information. I can infer a little bit from public records, uh, but determining who's actually a, an immediate relative is a little difficult, and I don't know that it adds that much value to the story currently. However, we do know for sure that she does have one brother, Christian Hildebrandt, we know this through Jesse Hildebrandt's interview, which I will include a link to in the description. Jesse Hildebrandt is Jody's niece, who spent some time with her uh, later on in 2008, and we'll get there eventually. Just a couple bullet points. Jody attended BYU. She graduated B at BYU between 95 and 96 with a bachelor's in English. Uh, she would continue her schooling through 2003 where she would graduate from the University of Utah with a master's in science studying educational psychology. Immediately after she graduates um, the University of Utah. It seems she jumped right into a role as program director, I believe, for the Cirque Lodge. The Cirque Lodge, from my understanding, is listed on the LDS Family Services and is a referral often. They are a luxury rehab center, essentially. They specialize in the treatment of addiction for drug and, and drugs and alcohol. Uh, they are on the spendier side for a 30-day 12-step program. Seems that they're listing their 30-day stay as uh, about $30,000. However, they are also, again, a luxury facility, and they do tend to care primarily for celebrities or uh, high-profile names. She would work there for about five years or so, and then 2007, we have record of her filing for her business license for her private practice. Um, you can see here she filed for, the file date was 4-24-2007. It is inactive at this time, but for Sunrise Counseling Center. So that kind of brings us up to 2008, and this is where things really begin to, to heat up for little Miss Jody. Um, she opens her practice. Obviously, she's also on the LDS uh, Family Services referral list at this time, and this is where we enter in Adam Paul Steed. Now, if you don't know anything about Adam, he is a whistleblower for the Boy Scouts of America scandal, um, and 
he he does have a couple interviews as well out there. I'll include the link to the one that's still up uh, for Hit with Hidden True Crime podcast. Hopefully, the one that he did with Mormon Story will be put back up. At this time, it was taken down due to a temporary restraining order that Mormon Podcast Story received. The assumption or understanding of that is that it was potentially his ex-wife, who he does talk about in that interview, and her father, who is a pretty big name in the Mormon church. This is purely speculation at this time. My hope is that if that is what it is related to, or if it's not something bigger from the church, at least, uh, my hope is that they'll edit those pieces out and get it back up. It was a six-hour interview, and it had a lot of really amazing information. It is a tough listen, because it it does contain some pretty uh, difficult material, but uh, to really understand Jody a little bit more is it's it's a part of part of that unfortunately at this time Adam and his then wife would be referred to Jody through his bishop now there is some other speculation and possible um, quote-unquote conspiracy behind how Adam was introduced because of the the Boy Scouts of America scandal that he he whistle blew on, if we don't know, Mormon the Mormon Church and the Boy Scouts of America are basically synonymous. They're the same. Uh, the Mormon Church literally sends pretty much all of their boys through Boy Scouts of America. Um, they they're big funder. It's yeah. Uh, so because Adam came forward, there is this speculation that maybe he was set up because there's and and, I mean mean, and there's not really any other motive out there so during basically during this time right Adam's life is being systematically destroyed by Jody and she really from from Adam's interview and everything she really didn't have actual proof she was apparently falsifying and creating documentation of, of Adam's uh, in Adam's files and I can't remember exactly what Adam said about the re- like the relationship that his bishop had to somebody that was close to Jody in some way during this same time frame that she is destroying Adam she actually has Jesse Hildebrandt staying with her I deduce that from Jesse's uh, interview directly where, where they discussed that they were about 15 or 16 when they were left in Jody's care. From that interview, we know also that Jody was profusely abusing them and, and uh, there were witnesses surrounding, surrounding that whole situation too that would remain a part of connections and all the future stuff that we're going to go into. It's, it's wild. Now, this this all unfolds with Adam and coming out to seek legal action and all of that. That all unfolds through 2010 to 2012. So in 2012, Adam does have a win in the court in some way. And they do find Jody guilty of a breach of confidentiality obviously the thing less talked about but adam also highlights is that they they did also cite jody for having a dual relationship with adam's ex-wife at the time what was somewhat explained is that jody was having his ex-wife work for her as well as be a patient, which is obviously just a big no-no. Um, because this did get ruled in Adam's favor, Jody did have her license suspended. They say for 18 months. I found a little snippet somewhere stating that Jody got her license back by August of 2013, so I'm not sure the exact date of when this took place but she did get her license back 
in 2013. Also, what was going on in 2012 for, for Jody Sienna, this is like where her life just really seems to kind of explode. Uh, she ended up getting married while she was still attending school. I believe they tied the knot in 1999. She was married to Brenton Pugh. She would have two children with him. For some reason, and I believe that it has everything to do with a little bit of what Jesse talked about again in their interview. When Jesse was at Jody's, obviously Jody had her children. I'm not sure if the younger one was around, but Jody's eldest, her daughter, Alexis, Jesse does mention was present and did potentially witness some of the treatment that Jesse was subjected to. I'm not quite sure if any of her of Jody's own kids were subjected to the same type of treatment, but I, I kind of, what I was able to find is that Alexis seems to have distanced herself from Jody, and when Jesse did their interview, I did a little snooping. I'm not trying to put Alexis out in the forefront because Jesse did mention in their interview as well that, that Alexis was, again, distance the, herself from all of this. Uh, but I did a little snooping and on, on Alexis's Facebook page, I did, I did see where Alexis shared the interview with Jesse and had a nice little supportive comment on there. So it seems like uh, Alexis obviously doesn't have that close of a relationship with her mother anymore. Now, Jody's other child, her son, is the youngest. He is, like, apparently probably her prodigy child from the looks of it. Uh, she has some posts uh, of her, well, reposting his his posts on her, her personal Facebook page. There's a whole article... Um, about him, I'll include that link in the description as well. Uh, from from like a U Utah local, I don't know if it's like a newspaper or something like that. But he tells stories about how he, from a young age, he was he was very interested in being an entrepreneur and just kind of the some of the stuff that he talks about and the way that he talks about his position on things um, or how he approached things from very young age just seems like. Yeah, just Jody's prodigy. Also, he's the only one that's ever really brought up. Yes, they acknowledge that she has two children, but they really only name Addison. So, so just an interesting tidbit on that. Jody and Brenton would remain married all the way up until 2012. That is when it, I believe, and from what I was able to find, they file for divorce. So, Jody's dealing with all this stuff with Adam and having to deal with this divorce. I'm sure because of the Adam situation, her practice tanks because it's not active anymore. Um, and as all of this is happening, create the creation of connections is birthed. And I feel like this is just very... It's very important uh, to why this, this connections classroom and this doctrine that she created manifested itself. But the interesting part about getting to 2012 is it gets a little, it just, there's, there's not a lot, it's very murky time frame and I'm, I'm still trying to dig into it a little bit more. We know that the Connections brand was born, but I, what's interesting is that I found that it, there's the Connections Foundation that was created first. I think that's right at 2012, 2013, uh, which is just a charity. It's a nonprofit. It's been talked about a little bit in some of the news now. Uh, 
foundation is created and then there's not there's there's not much else about connections um, there is this post we have where Jody is discussing that uh, I created connections to help you create joy in your life and relationships which I was like okay 2012 2012 well okay then there's got to be something on on connections like business wise right 2012 well I couldn't find I can't find anything about connections classroom or any of that until way later to be honest with you like much much later so here is the filing date for the business licensing but the filing date for the business licensing isn't even until 416 of 2018 but from my understanding she is operating connections from 2012 so there's just no business license I just don't un and we, we know that in 2012 she seems to have changed over obviously she got her license suspended so she couldn't continue to practice I personally feel like she decided to go down the path of life coaching because there's no regulations there's no real guidelines there's not like a board or anything for for life coaching not in the degree that you have it within clinical therapy or psychology or at any level of psychology so i i, I strongly and again this is my opinion but I, I strongly believe that she decided to go down the life coaching path to sidestep those regulations my theory is that be, and and this will kind of unfold as i as i share a little bit more but my theory is that a this allowed her to employ her clients without getting in trouble b it also allowed her to sidestep normal therapeutic practices or at least justify why she was stepping outside of the lines or or doing things that weren't necessarily um, looked highly upon and by just process of elimination and the time frame of things based off of Sherry Frankie's interview with Into the Light in April of this year where she shares that like when her family kind of started going to connections and she says that she was about 15 at that time when they started so I went back through her YouTube and, and you know, tried to kind of find the videos because she's, it's still up and she has all those posts of like first day of school, last day of school and went back to like her senior year to figure out just because I, 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 this, this is just how I decided to find that information, probably could have done a lot easier, but just to kind of determine her age and if she was 15 when they entered into this this would put them at least between 2017 and 2018 um, so why that's important is that this is about the time that Ruby Frankie steps into the picture and Ruby Frankie's YouTube channel at this time had been up and running for three years probably had already gained some traction and and I'm sure that that was attractive to Jody and growing her own business so it just is very odd to me that in in 2018 we finally see a business licensing for for connections classroom and this is around the same time that she's meeting Ruby however I I don't see much from Ruby or anything on even connections Facebook really going on um, until 2020 so I'm just I, I'm not sure if any of that means anything, but it's just very interesting to me. The other thing that came interesting to me too that kind of like lines up with some of this is a public records report that I found that shows that um, Jody purchased that property. It's, it it says in 2013. 
Um, but she just brought bought a lot. It wasn't developed. She actually doesn't build anything on that lot until 2017. Which, I don't know, again, it's just so interesting the way all these time blocks end up kind of like lining up. Um, I, I, I just, I feel like there's like a purpose or a reason. So the, yeah, there's this video that just, yeah, it just adds to my my suspicions on the time frame and her motives and what what she was th like whether or not she was literally planning this or things just flipping landed in her lap and worked out the way they did because wow uh, but uh, this particular video kind of struck me because of what she says here um, as far as connections and what connections is this is a video that was posted in June on June 8th 2022 to the connections Facebook page I mean we're all learning more I'm learning more every day Ruby's learning more and and the people who have come into this thing called connections connections is just this structure because principals can't go out and make a Facebook page so they needed principals need some, someone to do that and that's what we did I mean I had to get a building together and an organization to share these principles so that's all connections is is we are on a mission so that's all connection is she had to go out and literally get a building and build an organization well she literally kind of kind of did she created she created connections right 2012 2013 then all of a sudden she buys this property and then 2017, she's building it. 2018, now she's got this license filed. And she's partnering with, with people um, and growing this brand. It's pretty crazy. And it's, it's... Let me see if I can... I'll try to queue up this other video. A video cast. I want to do like a Dave Ramsey show. I want to do like a Dr. Laura show where people can call in live and get me and I can help walk them through their distortions back into truth. And I thought, wow, how would I do that? <laughs> you know, I don't know anybody who does that. But I'll tell you, one thing that I'm really good at is when I have an idea, I will track it down and figure out how to birth, how to create that idea um, if it's something that I really have a, a strong desire or passion around. So anyways, I... Hmm. Very, very, very interesting statement there. In my opinion. Very, very interesting statement to just look back on. It's kind of crazy how you can come full circle and end up eating your words a little bit, right? Um, when she gets an idea in her head, she's going to track it down and figure out a way to make it happen. And just after explaining everything I explained, that just seems to ring very true. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy. It is absolutely... Um, it just seems like that's that's truth. I don't like that word anymore. Now, 2018, she files for Connections Classroom. And then we fast forward um, a, f a few years later. And we see that um, she ends up actually filing for a second business license underneath the connections branding and in this one she is I'll zoom in for you a little bit she files on April 7th 2021 for connections mental fitness trainers LLC this one shows an active but it's interesting to me that connections classroom still shows active and I'll probably circle back to why that's interesting in a little bit but but the other, what's interesting about the Connections uh, mental fitness trainers is that she doesn't file for a licensing until that, uh, she doesn't file for that licensing until 2021, but on her Connections Facebook page, 
there is a video that they posted on February 27th of 2021. And I guess they may be, maybe they're just prepping for this business licensing to come through. But um, it just, it was, it, it's interesting that all these things kind of seem to be like already in motion by the time that she licensed them. We are getting ready to be your mental fitness trainer. We're getting truth, really easy to teach. We're, we're making it very simple, boiling it down to principles. That's how you're going to understand truth is really knowing principles, being able to put words to it and help you. And you're going to feel so much better. Absolutely. So I'm just going to span over here. We've got, uh, oh, can't see. there we go, <laughs> Tori and Sherry. How are you feeling about what you're, what you're uh, getting ready to go out and do, teaching truth to the world? Excited. So excited. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming to a town near you. And here's Kim and Jess. Hello. Becky, Liz, Michelle. And then we got, Johnny. got Johnny over there. Johnny. And, <laughs> and Johnny. And Johnny. And me. And, there's and Pam. Pam. Did you get Pam? No, Pam's over here. Pam. Hello. Johnny, Johnny is our, um, our, our uh, male uh, person who comes in and does the role play for the male so we can practice. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's quite talented to uh, do the role play. So, so glad that you're uh, with us. And any of you who are interested in becoming a mental fitness trainer, we are going to open that up uh, to train other people. So give us a call or email us at support at connectionsclassroom.com. And uh, maybe you can come to the next uh, retreat for the... Come work out with us. That's right, come work out. Put you to work. <laughs> okay, so remember how I said earlier that I believe she went into doing the life coaching side of things as opposed to the like psychology side of things so that she could sidestep all these rules about employing your clients? <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what she's doing here. All of these people have been her clients. Ruby is technically still her client, like, currently in this video. So it's really it's really interesting to me because obviously that, 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 that just seems like her motive the, the entire way through. So for connections, they really start to grow between 2020 and 2022. Uh, you'll see on their Facebook page, there's tons of these posts by multiple different couples. They're pretty much primarily couples the whole way through. And some of the stories are just... Uh, they're, they're almost like they in invoke a little bit of like anger in me, but... There's tons and tons of patterns to be found in 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 what she's doing. It's a system. It's a system, a hundred percent a system. And um, there's one couple that stuck out to me. And if you feel like going through, I mean, you gotta scroll a lot. But um, there's videos of Curtis and Laura. I believe their last name is like Daylay, Daylay or something like that. Um, summary of their story, they were separated, living in separate homes for three and a half years. It's like, an, uh, he's a little bit older, they're not like super young. Three and a half years, and there's a whole flipping video of Ruby and Kevin's reaction to finding out that they were finally back together in the same home under the same roof after three and a half years of separation. And why were they separated? Because... Curtis has a long standing addiction with lust and pornography. In one of his videos, he literally states that he was looking at porn at the age of six. That sounds oddly familiar to Ruby's claims that she made. And that he was, I believe there's a section that he admits, it says that he was addicted by, the, by age 10. And that he brought all of those misconceptions of what sex and love should be like, especially in a marriage, into his marriage and and imposed them on his wife. And man, it's just, it's the, like, 
it's disturbing. It's really, it's really quite disturbing how, how much she targeted vulnerable, potentially at points desperate couples from all ages, and and I mean truly was targeting um, people from the church. I did forget to mention earlier that also when she lost her license, she got dropped from the LDS Family Service roster, but they still continued to refer people to her. Continued to. Um, there was an interview that just came out, uh, which is why I kind of put this off and then for another day just to make sure I could look into that a little bit more and, and kind of see how it fit into all the other information that I've gathered. Um, this woman was not um, referred by the LDS church. She was referred by a friend of a friend, and she did enter into Jody's program as a single person, not as a married couple. And so what she had to say about um, what she witnessed in her, her time there, she was on therapy with Jody for about a year. I'll include the link to her interview as well in the description. You can watch the full thing if you would like. The only, you know, the only other thing that comes to mind, many of the people in my group, and I would say probably almost 100%, they were married um, and, and through the LDS church referrals. Um, I think mainly for their husband, you know, they're, they're doing this kind of group duel with her. Um, so she did the male group and the female group. I, I uh, believe at one other point there was one or two other singles um, that didn't last very long, but it was primarily married people. Um, and I, I did, toward the end, a lot of the reason for leaving is I felt like there, it was very targeted toward the church and mentioned that the church was paying for these people's services, which, you know, left a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth, knowing not, not that people aren't deserving of help or that the church isn't supposed to help. It felt very targeted again from her, more in a way of like, I found a way to take advantage of a niche and I found, I found a loophole, but she was again thinking highly enough about herself that she was almost bragging about it. I, I, so it, it that just kind of sums that up for me and if you think if you go and watch adam paul's steeds it's not really a watch i guess it's just a voice recording but if you go and listen to adam paul Steed's interview with hidden true crime podcast he does mention in there uh, he gets asked do you think that that jody's beliefs align with the mormon church at all and he says he compares her he compares her to Ted Bundy when Ted Bundy joined the church it was convenient it was a way to have access to people it was a part it was a group that he could ex exploit just as much as Jody's been doing the same thing and she she's been doing it for f at least 14 years since she entered into practicing which is it's just it's it's so concerning that because you also have to think that we're we're talking about a community, the Mormon Church, they that it's just a bunch of cover up, all the 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 skeletons and the dirty laundry they just pack it away and they don't want it to be shown to the surface or the light. They they did everything they could to cover up Boy Scouts of America. I mean it just it continues, and then it perpetuates abuse. And then you've also got this idea of this pressure of religion saying oh we well, need to forgive you need to forgive you need to forgive and let go because those who hold a grudge are only hurting themselves it's but then there's no acknowledgement to to what happened or anything there's no validation to being a victim of anything so it's just and and that's where like again this is my opinion but it's you're targeting a niche for sure and you're targeting very vulnerable people who are already in some way, shape, or form indoctrinated into this religious uh, community and these these beliefs and these, these structures and these systems. And all of that religious pressure and then you you have them going to get assistance from their bishop their bishop tells them to go to see this lady 
they go to see this lady and they're together in this to start out and what i've seen from from even just going through and watching ruby and kevin progress on the connections facebook page they're together they're together together and then all of a sudden they're separate so when you first walk in there you know, it doesn't seem so off, but even if it does seem off, when you have two people coming in there and one person, she obviously relates to the women, she gets the women on her side, and she probably treats them 100% different. This this young lady from this interview also mentions that. And so she gets the wife bought in, and then she gets, starts to angle this type of aggression towards the husband it's not and and she even says it too it's not necessarily that she hates men directly but i think she has this uh, this hatred kind of for successful marriages or marriages in general potentially maybe there's this bitterness that she still has from hers um which i'll play a video that kind of indicates that that is the case in a moment but so now you're creating these like micro conflicts and you're creating this tension and this this disruption between these two people you got one bought in more than the other and even adam says this in his interview and then so what what happens then you you're going there to fix your marriage you're obviously at a point of desperation to try to get some assistance and outside help to fix things or make things better and then you're having somebody drive a wedge between you further the goal is to separate. It, she literally talks about how she needs to destroy a marriage before it can be reborn. And and so even if you wanted, if one person isn't bought in all the way, they're bought into their relationship. So they're not just going to walk away from the relationship. And then furthermore, you get to separate them and create money opportunities for, for individual coachings or one-on-ones and things like that. And... It's, it's all an exploitation. I truly believe that she looks at everything and thinks dollar signs, dollar signs. It's weird to listen to her son, Addison, sit there and talk about how, oh, all I thought about was money, all I thought about was money in one of his videos, because it seems to be the driving factor for Jody as well, even if it's at the cost of people's lives or emotions or anything, really. It doesn't matter. She obviously puts herself up on this pedestal, um, which is classic narcissism, and I don't think that that this happens just by accident. I think she is a calculated person. I think that she she knows everything that she was doing. It was like a chess game for her, for sure, for sure. And that's why I have such a hard focus on her, and like I am so interested in in figuring out her story because i think that this goes way deeper if she's been doing this for this long and flying out of the radar for this long and having this many victims who are afraid to come forward she's been doing this for a, a long long time and at the end of this video i'll probably put in a little bit of speculation maybe some conspiracy there's not really any hard evidence and I tried to I don't want to like take away from any factual and information or anything like that by speculating but I just I I found some stuff that makes me wonder and even Adam mentioned something in his interview that makes me wonder even more which is why I went down that rabbit hole but we'll get to that later possibly so let me veer it back on track just a little bit here I did want to kind of come back to what I noticed in a trend when I was flowing through um, the Connections Facebook page. Like I mentioned earlier, 2020 to like 2022, things seem to be really thriving, especially 2020 to, to 2021. You're seeing conferences like crazy, retreats, both men and women, and um, all these like videos with like uh, couples workshops and stuff being posted to Connections pages. And then right about the time that all of that controversy started with Ruby Frankie, Ruby makes the decision with Kevin to not give the two youngest children presents for Christmas. And they go into this whole thing about why. I'll, I'll include the podcast information in the description as well. Especially if I'm wrong about the dates, I should clear it up. Once this... This, this comes out about the presence, 
and obviously then you get a lot of public attention and everything because it was on her on her um ruby frankie's youtube i believe as well and there was already a lot of questions starting to come up then about the the way that ruby was parenting her kids there's all these things going on with chad and this this 70 days away almost died on this this trail walk that he did for troubled teens in flipping arizona and then he comes home and he plays this prank on his his brother and all of a sudden now he doesn't have a room and for like seven months sleeping on a bean bag apparently in the family room so there's these these really really strict intense parenting tactics being employed by um ruby and kevin i mean kevin was definitely a part of it there's plenty of videos of kevin um on board so um and it does state that kevin and ruby told the children they weren't going to have these presents but so there's this controversy starting to to come up and i think that at that time the because of ruby's association with connections connections started getting the heat too if you look through some of those older posts back in that time frame you'll notice that all of a sudden connections is turning off or limiting who can comment on on posts by that time and then further into 20 um 2022 you start seeing things start to kind of die off um it's like um it's like that post kind of started to get you know that that post caused all of this negative feedback and negative attention in a way coming back to connections and then when you get into 2022 like february 26th of 2022 is the last time that kevin actually appears on connections facebook and like i mentioned earlier how they're always together 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 ruby and him were always in the same frame in all their videos and then all of a sudden the last couple posts made by kevin he's no longer in the same frame as ruby and ruby's obviously like in an entirely different place kevin's in this like dark room with the christmas tree in the background and ruby's in this bright place with this white background it's it's very it's very telling in my opinion but that would be the last time that he appears you've even got um pam pam doesn't appear i don't believe after march of 2022 she's no longer on the page um i believe page uh Paige Hannah and, and Johnny Hannah have already kind of dropped off into the background at this point. These are all pretty dominant couples that appeared over and over and over again. Paige was even one of the ones that was on that video of the first 10 trainers that they, they were training for uh, Connections Mental Fitness training. Um, and then you've got the the, the Del, Delay, or Delays. Uh, Curtis and Lauren, they're on there, they're on there. I mean, they're a big story. They're on there consistently, and then all of a sudden they drop off. I uh, can't remember the last time they're on there. I want to say it's right around 2022 as well. And then this is where you see this whole shift on that Connections Facebook page to where it's just Jody and just Ruby pretty much entirely. They launched their whole Moms and Truth right around this time. Ruby steps away from her personal platform on youtube to join in with connections she even starts to try to create a new youtube channel on called like under the rug or something with page uh that has been taken down doesn't exist couldn't find it anywhere so just it, it just definitely seems like this is where things start to take a turn for the worst as far as public image and stuff goes for connections but if you look at some other videos that i have turned up out there um, I'll include a couple links for those as well in the description. Uh, there's people chasing down some of the actual staff members and stuff of connections. And it seems that, as it's been talked about slightly already, that this is pretty cult-like. And it, it definitely oozes a little bit of a feeling of a modern-day cult. Right? They can't function like they used to in the past. These cults can't. So... I think that Jody definitely is masterminded her way into this whole community and network um, with her with her doctrine on some level. I believe Becky 
Barry, she's kind of there at the beginning. I haven't really mentioned her, but if you go back to like 2020, 2021, she's there dominantly. She was training the master classes. Pam has always been Jody's like sidekick right hand. Even Jesse admit uh, mentions that Pam was around during their time with Jody, and how Pam would actually be like a spy and like report back to Jody back then. Um, so all these people who were being trained by Jody and who were kind of like other people who were teaching things for Jody um, are part of connections. They're still like and 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 like I said, connections is still active. Their business license is still active. While every single other one is no longer active, Connections business license is Connections Classroom. I'll bring it back up just to show you one more time. Um, active. So, uh, but all the other ones, they're no longer active, which is interesting to me. Um, and I think it's because Connections is, is much larger. Pam is supposed to be the president. If you, in, in, in one of the other videos, again, I'll include the, uh, the link in the description. Her name is Jessica, kind of an up-and-coming uh, YouTuber, it seems, and, and she's doing an amazing job covering some of this stuff. I'm, I'm enthralled by some of the stuff that she's brought forward. In her video, she discusses how it looks like like Becky Berry has like her own like coaching thing. Like these people are going and coaching, doing their own coaching things or whatever their life coaching businesses, and they're still using the principles of truth within their coaching mechanisms. Which is, listen, I'm only going to weigh in just a little bit on the life coaching thing. Life coaching and therapy are wholly two separate different things. First of all, second of all, life coaching is definitely a hundred percent like on the clients. It's it's a hundred percent on the client for them to be successful or to to really get what they want out of a life coach. Um, the last thing that you do with with coaching is telling a person anything that they need to do or must do or how they should do it. Period. You are you don't you you don't even try to suggest things. You allow the client to develop everything for themselves. So. None of what Jody was doing or practicing reflects true life coaching, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, and we'll move on from there. But I think Jody also, had, just like she did, taking advantage of the LDS sh uh, church and and those and people who are vulnerable coming to her for help, she took advantage of life coaching and what it allowed her to do and get away with, essentially. <laughs> So it's it's heavily concerning that you've got Jody training all these people under this pretense that it's 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 life coaching, and now you've got these people branching off and starting their own things in the in the heat of the moment of some controversy too. Is is so it would seem they they distance themselves. At least that's how it appears on Facebook, and maybe all this other crap is going on behind the scenes still, and that's why there's certain people panicking right now because of Jody's arrest, but. Either way, it was it was a facade, in my opinion. It was all a front for elements of control and, and to feed Jody's narcissism, but also to probably, you know, uh, line her pockets. Especially, it, you know, considering the LDS church and everything was paying for a lot of the clients that she was seeing. And no wonder, because if you go to Connections website, it's still up and functioning. And, 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 and um... The, those prices were <laughs> way up there. So, and, and and way up there for not providing actual coaching, but just providing you some brainwashing. It's it's it's, it's yeah. I'm really glad that Jody is in the hot seat right now, um, alongside of Ruby. But I've been pretty concerned that how long this has gone on without any true updates. So I'm glad I'm seeing some stuff flood out here now because we kind of had to wait until this week to see what was going to happen with the hearing. Um, they should not be out on bail, period, either one of them. Uh, Floaty is... Uh, Floaty. Jody is an absolute flight risk. Um, I believe that when all that stuff went down with Adam, I think there is uh, information that she ended up fleeing the country. Um... 
so I don't think that's gonna count very well for her if that can be taken into consideration during her bail hearing but I, I just I'm glad that I'm seeing it you know pick back up again because uh, we, the longer something goes on without any news updates and stuff like that it seems like the mo the more the public loses interest especially when there's all these other things kind of going on at the same time um, and I just don't want I don't want this to to fall flat I don't I don't especially for Jody I know that Ruby and them are gonna catch the the spotlight because it's their kids and they're a well-known YouTube family but I strongly believe that it wouldn't have gotten necessarily to this point with Ruby had it not been Jody's influence and again as we mentioned before in my video that this has been going on for a long time it just happened to meet its boiling point finally but there is so much stuff under the surface still that I am waiting to come out and I hope to God that it does. Uh, I won't. I, I for the victim's sake, for the insurance that Jody is held accountable and learns what accountability really is and taking responsibility really is. Um, so I'm going to round this video off from here. I'm going to play a little snippet of Jesse Hildebrandt um, on ABC News that just came out a few hours ago, I think. And then I'm going to end it with the video of Jody that I feel like really just shows her true colors. And in my opinion, it definitely explains where Connections was born from within herself. And it, I, it, it literally, she, she says for herself in this video that she, she realized something that she calls distortion. These are principles and things that she developed and created out of a moment of pain and out of a moment of, of um, self-soothing, honestly, in my opinion. So take a look at that. Check out the links down in my description for any videos or anything like that that I referenced. I'm gonna try to include everything um, that, I've, that I've used or cited basically in my description here um and yeah uh, i'm not i'm hoping to continue to make some videos i probably will follow up i do want to kind of again keep the focus on jody but i'm interested in kevin at this point too especially after what just broke um about some of the police reports from the day of the arrest so keep a lookout for that i'm not sure exactly how this channel will develop but um, I hope you enjoy this video and um, stick around for more. We knew that Jody does this. We knew 14, almost 15 years ago that she's already done this to me. And people saw and people witnessed and did nothing. She made me sleep outside in the snow. She duct taped me. Um, I wasn't allowed to speak to anyone. What in theory was the justification for the duct tape. The duct tape was, in her words, an external reminder to me that I'm a liar and that every word that comes out of my mouth is a lie. I understand why the public is focusing on Ruby. It's Ruby's children. But all of these these theories and these modalities and these these parenting ideas, that all comes from Jody. That is 100% the therapeutic on ideas of Jody Hildebrandt. I'll tell you a story. I remember as a teenager and young adult feeling so overwhelmed with pain. Sometimes it was low grade, sometimes it was really intense, but it always had this base that said, you don't matter, you're not enough, you don't do it right, you make people upset, you're the reason why people are having pain in their life, you're not enough. That was always at the base of me, and I felt pain. And so because I was raised the way I was raised, I learned how to be nice. I learned how to be good. I learned how to be happy. I learned how to please people and do what they wanted. And so I made a choice to get married. And as I was going to school, I was uh, engaged in this relationship with my, my partner, and I did everything I knew how to do to be happy and to be the person he wanted me to be, and to um, uh, be able to 
uh, fulfill the things that he wanted me to fulfill so that I could be a good wife. Sound familiar? You get where I'm coming from? <laughs> and all that did was create more pain. And so the more I realized I felt pain, the more I tried to be nicer and better and more thoughtful and more helpful. I had no understanding that there, there was a correlation between those two. The harder I tried to be nice, the more pain I felt. I didn't understand that. And so when I got done with school, I opened up my private practice as a clinician and started working with people. And this is like 10 years later, fast forward, okay? So I'm in this pain, just very similar to how you are. And I started realizing that the reason I was in pain is because I did not understand core principles of truth. I started realizing that those statements were destructive. They weren't helpful. They weren't loving. They weren't kind. They didn't motivate me to really be nicer. They motivated me to start controlling. And I had never heard that word, but I started seeing it. I started seeing that the way that I had been angled from childhood till the time uh, I was in my mid-30s was to control not only my own emotions, but yours. And how truly unloving that was. And that was offensive to me. How, how dare someone say that I was a controlling person because I was so nice. And so as I started learning and as I started helping the people who were sitting across from me on the couch, I started realizing that these thoughts were very destructive, something I call distortion. And I, so I started realizing to um, how to move those destructive and distorted thoughts back into reality, back into the truth of my, my responsibility was not to be nice to somebody else. My responsibility was to be nice to me primarily.